Greetings, YouTube and fellow traditionalist Catholics. This is Sergio Becerra II, and welcome back to the channel. And we're going to be continuing with more of our Bible studies. And this time, I'm going to be focusing more on the Gospels of the New Testament. Some selections that I have uh, picked out. So, for today, we're going to go to the book of Galatians. We're going to look at chapter 6, verse 17. Uh, this is one that I wanted to focus on because, as I mentioned in my last video, about one particular religious experience, which I also believe to be a miracle because this has happened to one person in particular that has received the greatest gift from God of all time. So I'm just going to read this one little verse that's right here, and then we'll get into it. So chapter 6, verse 17. From henceforth, let no man be troublesome to me, for I bear the marks of the Lord Jesus in my body. So, what St. Paul is trying to say, that he has these markings on his body from the Lord Jesus himself. So, this is where I wanted to discuss one particular subject, and that would be, which we all have heard of, called the stigmata, which is bearing the wounds of the, of the Lord Jesus from his crucifixion, from the hands, the feet, from the crown of thorns, the lashings, and the, and that pierced wound on the right hand side where that roman centurion thrust his spear into him at the moment of jesus's death now this particular verse gives us an early indication of the stigmata which which saint paul has has talked about what she has mentioned what what, what i meant to say so far the only person ever recorded, one man going back to the 13th century, was St. Francis of Assisi in Italy. So we're all familiar with St. Francis of Assisi, the founder of the Franciscan Order, who spent the rest of his days living a Christ-like life, which is living in poverty, living in also living through chastity means don't don't get buried don't do anything else in particular learn to live in poverty living a poor life working for god serving god so as the story goes by the time francis was in his early 40s one day in the year 1224 Upon the feast, he, I'm sorry, as Francis was um, fasting for 40 days for the feast day of St. Michael, Michael the Archangel, one day on the feast of the exaltation of the cross, he saw in the sky this angel, which, was, which is known as a seraph, which is a six-winged angel, and, on, and that angel that it showed Christ fashioned to a cross, the crucified Christ, a crucifix. Because it is said that Francis had spent six hours in out in the wilderness, well, out in the mountains, which history says, along with the along with the, another fellow friar that was with him but was far away from him, is what history says. So Francis was praying alone while his uh, companion was uh, waiting for him out of the mountains. And he's imitating Christ's passion with his arms stretched out as if he were to, as if he was, um, well, what's the word? I'm sorry. Contemplating Christ's passion as if he was on the cross. Arms stretched out for six hours. That's when he saw 
the six-winged angel, the seraph, and it showed Christ on the cross. And it is said that beams of light shot from where every market where Christ had been crucified and hit, hit directly on Francis's body. The wounds on the hands, the feet, the crown of thorns. Sorry, that's my coffee maker. Beating sound. So the wounds on the hands, the feet, the crown of thorns, the lashings, and the side wound. So this was the first ever man to have this religious experience. To have the greatest gift of all kinds. The greatest gift of all time, which I believe to be a miracle that someone would ever get something like this. And the book of Galatians, as I mentioned, gives an earlier detail by St. Paul. So I'm wondering, did, did St. Paul may have had the stigmata before Francis? I'm not sure because that one verse I just read kind of gives us an early earlier description about uh, Christ's wounds. On Paul, in which we later learned about Francis of Assisi. Francis had lived with his wounds for two years upon his death in 1226. So, within a couple of years after Francis' death, in 1228, Pope Gregory the Ninth officially declared him a saint because of the wounds he had received. This is like the first ever man to get the markings of Christ's crucifixion on him. But Francis isn't the first person. There have been there have been uh, required accounts of other people. Saint Catherine of Siena, she had, cause she lived, um, over a century after Francis's time to get the wounds. But unlike Francis, Catherine of Siena never bled from where the markings were, and it was some have regarded it as the invisible stigmata, even though she had the wounds on her hands, but no blood was oozing. Uh, there have been other people, uh, mostly women to be exact, that have received the wounds. Those who have um, taken vows of poverty by joining a convent and becoming a nun. St. Veronica of Ju Saint Veronica Giuliani, she received the wounds. Um, St. Rita also. Hang on, let me look it up. I have my phone up here. So I can look it up. Let me look up the last name. Saint Rita uh, Cassia. Yeah, Saint Rita of Cassia, she received what we, what you would call a partial stigma, which is she had been praying in front of a crucifix. And all of a sudden, like a piece of um thorn from from the crucifix she was praying in front of, like m mysteriously just came off. Not a real thorn, but kind of like a fragment fr just from the the figurine crucifixion. Well, well, you know what I'm talking about. Just a thorn came off and, and it penetrated her forehead. And here's a picture of it. If you can see clearly, right there, that's St. Rita, you can see the thorn on her head. So she received something called a partial stigmata. Even though a piece fragment of the, the crucifix, not a real thorn, but a part of the crucifix of a, well, you know what I mean. The crown of thorns, not, not a real crown of thorns, but part of the figurine of Christ. Well, I'm pretty sure you all understand just came off and penetrated her forehead. Even after her death, uh, her body had been exhumed a couple of times and they saw that same wound that was still glistening with blood. Her body uncorrupt, uncorrupted, so she was later made a saint. And uh, and, and of course, um, one particular, another particular woman, uh, I think she was part of the, what was it, the Augustinian nuns? Yeah, what is it? Catherine and Emmerich, a German, a German nun of the order of St. Augustine? Yes. 
because she too had suffered the stigmata and wrote a book on her revelations and visions of, of Christ's passion. Because I did a video about on this on her book, The Dolores Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, a couple of years ago, uh, a book review that I did. Because she too uh, had suffered the stigmata, couldn't eat, had to live off the Eucharist. So even though some of her books had her name on it, but since she had suffered the wounds, someone else had to write her work for her, including her famous book on her visions of the passion. And then, of course, there's one more person in particular, uh, St. Padre Pio, that we all remember because he was a Capuchin monk, which is part of the Franciscan order. He, too, had visions of the passion and then had, got the wounds as well. Because he had lived with the wounds up until his death in 1968. And then there was another woman from Germany, uh, Theresa Neumann, who I would say had the works done to her. Not only had all the markings, but also oozing blood from the eyes. Like I said, there have been like about 300 recorded accounts of the stigmata. I'm not going to get into all into a lot into all of them but just some of these particular people who had lived a holy life completely and received the greatest gift of all so reading this verse right here got me curious because i have watched and read and watched and watched again this one documentary on youtube they talked about the stigmata. Of course, they talked about St. Francis, Catherine of Siena, and then um, Theresa Neumann and Padre Pio as well. And then, of, then of course, uh, well, here's the thing. It's not just Catholics who, who have gotten the stigmata because this documentary that I watched, you have some Protestants that have said to have received it but this was like in the 90s so it's not just catholic so it's also protestants that have that have received it at least one in particular was a an anglican deacon a female anglican deacon who had received the markings herself but mysteriously died no one knows for sure because her body was found in a in a river the, but there was no indication of suicide. So how her body got there, no one knows. But then, of course, a couple of, what is it, Baptist Christians that have said to have gone to wounds themselves. So it's not just Catholics who have mostly gotten it. So there have been reports of some Protestants as well that have gone the wounds. So yeah, so two, well, three Protestants, one Anglican, two Baptists. To Baptist. But the stigmata is like one of my favorite topics that I like to research on. So Corinthians 6 verse 17 gives us an early account of what St. Paul has mentioned in here. So that covers this video on this topic. So tell me what you think about uh corinthians 6 verse 17 and the in the stigmata i'm sorry i took a long time to to discuss this um forgive me i have somewhat of a speech impediment problem uh i can say more things clearly in writing than my saying my own words so that takes care of that corinthians 6 verse 17 and Given an early depict early description of the in, description of the stigmata, and what I talked about with Saint Francis of Assisi and many others who have received the wounds of Christ, that's a. And you know, th there might be come a time in the near future I might return back to this topic on the stigmata, because uh, I have some books in my room talking about Saint Francis. And um, I have not read the works of St. Bonaventure because he wrote a biography on St. Francis because he too was a Franciscan monk who later became cardinal. 
we talked about St. Francis's life and, of course, him receiving the wound. So I got to uh, look into that another time. But I might return back to this topic on the stigmata. Okay. I apologize for taking forever discussing this. I know uh, sometimes I'm a little slow when it comes to my own words. All right. Tell me tell me what you uh, what you think on this topic. Corinthians 6 verse 17 by St. Paul. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell for future videos on this topic. All right. Well, well this wraps it up for this video. Have a great day. Have a blessed day. Amen. See you next time. Bye.